larger catechism reading this morning is uh, based on question number 19. The question flows from the discussion that we've had on God's providence. And the question here is, what is God's providence towards the angels? And the answer of the catechism is, God by his providence permitted some of the angels willfully and irrecoverably to fall into sin and damnation, limiting and ordering that and all their sins to his own glory, and established the rest in holiness and happiness, employing them all at his pleasure in the administrations of his power, mercy, and justice. We might not think right away about how God's providence applies to the angels. We generally don't think much of the angels at all. We let them figure out for themselves what God's providence means for them. Yet, it is very instructive to look at how God has arranged time and history for the angels, particularly in comparison with His work among men. Two different programs. Obviously, there are differences in our natures, the angels being spiritual beings. Uh, and interestingly, the Catholic Catechism uh, notes a, a distinction between angels in their being as spirits and angels in their calling, uh, what they do. And uh, angels describes their mission. They are messengers of God. Uh, they are heralds of God. And so they are spirits who engage in a mission. But they uh, differ from us in that they do not have physical bodies. We have both a soul and a body. And they are conjoined to, together in one uh, individual. The angels do not share that. Now, the way that God relates to the angels is different from the way that He relates to us. In uh, the weeks ahead, we will see how God uh, put together His plan for humanity uniting us under the federal head of our humanity, Adam. His actions in the Garden of Eden had consequences for all of us. We were united to Him and joined to Him so that when He ate of the forbidden fruit, we sinned in Adam. As a consequence, we can go on to say that Jesus is the second Adam, and because of that federal headship that the first Adam had over us, and the original sin that came to us, Jesus as a second Adam represents us and acts on our behalf, and so He can uh, have His righteous act come to us through faith. Uh, we'll get into that a little bit later. The angels have a different relationship. The angels act individually and separately before God, each standing before God individually and personally. In some ways, you might suggest that they have an Arminian theology, that they each have to make their own choice before God. And if they obey, if they follow the Lord, they are blessed. But if they disobey, then they are judged. And so what you have among the angelic realm is a situation in which they individually acted, either to obey God or to disobey. And we have that great rebellion that took place under uh, Satan, where many of the angels rebelled against God and his Christ, and uh, then you have some who remain faithful and true. Each of them uh, will be judged according to their own good works. There is no mediator for the angels. Uh, that's one of the things that the writer to the Hebrews points out. The Jewish Christians were very much enamored with speculation with regards to the angels, and uh, the writer to the Hebrews says that it wasn't angels that uh, he came to help, but those of us who are the children of Abraham. Jesus, the mediator, stands for us, and he atones for our sins. But Satan and the angels and the demons that fell have no mediator. They stand alone. And they are judged individually and separately for their own actions. On the other hand, those who obeyed and remained faithful are established in the rest and holiness and happiness that uh, is due to them. All of them, our catechism reminds us, are employed at God's own good pleasure. And as you go through the scriptures, you find 
uh, the angels at work on behalf of the people of God and God's plan of redemption throughout history and time. The angels guarded the entrance to the Garden of Eden after Adam and Eve were cast out. The angels came and uh, came, came to uh, Abraham and uh, visited with him before going to uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, bringing judgment on those cities. The angels ministered to Hagar as she wandered away. Uh, the angels had many different callings throughout the history of the church. Most especially, their ministry was pronounced with the coming of Christ. As the angels greeted his birth with, with songs in the heavens, and uh, they will accompany him once more when he returns in glory to bring history to a close. Angels, as the writer to the Hebrews says, are ministering spirits sent to render assistance to us who are the heirs of salvation. We don't believe with the, the Catholic Church that we have uh, guardian angels, a particular angel that guards each one of us, but the angels as a whole and individually minister to the needs of God's elect people. Well, in all things, they accomplish the will of the Father. And this is God's providential uh, disposition with regard to the angels. His governing of the angels and accomplishing His own sovereign will and purpose on, in, in their regard. So here is God's providence 